I'm not a Swifty fan, but I'm a fan of some Swifty fans, so I guess I'm kind of an indirect Swifty fan. Anyway, if you're following me, you get what I'm saying. This month, I am teaching you how to make cake toppers in not one, but two different methods. This is because I need to have Savannah's version and McKenna's version. Both my daughters have birthdays three days apart in the month of May. We usually celebrate together, but I usually enjoy getting them their own cakes and have their own design and flair on them just to make it extra special. In this particular tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make the heart hands. This one was designed to lay on top of a cookie cake with some of the most fun acrylic colors. I am down in my workshop and I am getting ready to do McKenna's version of the cake toppers. There are two different cuts that I'm making, a bottom layer and a top layer. The top layer, I really wanted it to look more like a silhouette and because of it being so bold, that's why I enhanced it with that bottom layer. I could just do the heart hands, but this way I can add some text that'll be engraved on that bottom layer too and maybe even paint fill it so that it gives it a real pop. So let's get these cut. I have a bunch of acrylic here. Um, as you can see in my pile, I keep pulling it out because I need to make decisions on what I want to use. And then I just never put it away because it's easy for me to flip. So I need a bicycle rack or some other method of storing them. But um, my daughter loves this print right here and loves the color purple. So I'm thinking about doing that. But I just got from Houston Acrylic um, a bunch of bunch of acrylic that's just gonna be added to my pile probably. I got black glitter cast acrylic. Oh, I really like that. I don't know guys, I might need to put the purple back. I think I'm gonna use the black glitter instead of the purple. So this will be my backer. These will be the heart hands that you see on the topper. Here, I'm gonna have to put masking on the bottom layer because I'm gonna paint fill her lettering on there. So let's cut the bottom layer first. This does have that plastic masking on it, but usually there is a good side and a bad side to this as well. And I just need to do a double take. Putting my hand behind it to see if it makes a difference or not. It doesn't look like it, it really makes a whole whopping difference. I'm gonna put some masking on here. My masking over here on a paper towel dispenser, although I'm needing another method. <laughs> I really need to clean up my workshop, so judgment free zone, y'all. I'm gonna start there. At least everything's in reaching distance, though. Um, a scraper thinger. As I mentioned before, I hope you're here and that you learned something, but terminology probably won't be one of the somethings that you learn because just kind of say things in my head. The masking is going to allow me to paint fill her letters without getting it all over the acrylic. What I typically do from here is I hit command A to select everything and I'm going to leave the item. Ooh, I'm actually going to move it also. It sits on my laser bed. I'm not sure if that matters or not. Um, but I am going to leave the item behind that I am currently cutting. I want the starting point to be in the bottom right corner. I just wanna see the size. All right, so about eight, a little less than eight and a half inches and then four and a half inches tall. Um, it should fit perfect. I always just use one file name when sending it over. So let's see if that sticks. And then I also use the lines on my laser bed to try to at least keep it straight so that it is even. When there's air bubbles that are on there, as long as it's not affecting where I'm going to paint, I usually don't care. I just leave it on. Load my file, frame it up. Perfect. All right, let's cut it. It cut right through. I'm gonna put it over here 
so that I can paint fill it. Here's uh, my other daughter, cake topper. I also have a tutorial on how to make this butterfly one. It's not assembled together yet because my favorite glue is upstairs, but you can learn how to make the butterfly one. I'm gonna leave this here and get the other piece of acrylic into the laser bed while I'm paint filling that. Heading back over here, again, I'm gonna select everything except where I want to cut. There's my heart hands. I'm gonna go ahead and engrave um, the little details of the hands. I guess just to see how it turns out, it might add some extra character. And because I'm doing that, I'm gonna leave the masking on just to omit any kind of ghosting that could occur from the uh, engrave. Looks like it's ready to go. When any of my wood or acrylic is curved or bowed, you can see my collection of magnets that stick right to my laser. I'm just going to grab one or two of those and anchor it down. And to keep it completely flat, I'll do it on the side too. And I'll frame it again. Make sure the magnets don't hit the back part of the gantry because it is metal. And this is magnetic too, so I have had magnets go along for a ride when I'm trying to frame pieces. All right, here we go. Typically I would use acrylic paint and a sponge. I usually just buy a cheap sponge and cut it into pieces and paint fill this lightly, just a very thin layer. Um, we did a project with my kids and I'm out of white acrylic paint. So I'm using my next favorite to do this and I'm gonna see how it turns out. Uh, Molotov, the, these are from Bombing Science and they're my absolute favorite spray paints to use. I actually have another project going on that's drying and um, I used a mixture of four different colors here but the blending on them is just so beautiful and light and so simple so I'm going to go from top down I'm not going to spray from the side and I'm going to fill her name from here sprayed I did a pretty good job of keeping all the spray paint off of the edges because this is going to lay, this side is gonna lay flat on the cake and um, I'm gonna make sure I can clean it with some Dawn dish soap before using it. So I'm gonna let this dry out here with the rest of my collection. Oh, see, I already forgot about my magnets. I'm gonna stick them back over here. Got my heart hands. And take off the masking and see what it looks like. Oh my golly, look how pretty. So pretty. Now that the spray paint has completely dried, I am going to peel off the masking. Oh, and that really does pop. I'm glad. Sometimes when it, the masking has some um, opaqueness to it, it's a 50-50 chance on what the lettering is going to look like. At least I think. You don't know until you try. And now I just need to get my, my little stabby tool. And weed out the rest of the letters. Oh, that looks so good. Okay, now the moment of truth. Oh my goodness, she's going to love it. So this one is sitting on top of a cookie cake and there's going to be icing around it. And then this one is going to be in a cake. Awesome. I couldn't be happier with how they turned out. There are typically two different types of glue that I use when it comes to wood and acrylic. Um, with wood, of course, I use super glue, but or wood glue, I should say. But then I also use super glue to help it cure faster. Um, and I use DAP Rapid Fuse, and I use Total Boats Medium Craft Glue that they have, and it is just phenomenal. That, that's, but since that one is upstairs, we're going to use DAP. to sit that on there and we're just gonna let it dry 
in short, they turned out really good and I'm very happy with them. I wanted to design them so that this could be broken off. Otherwise, I could have always done two layers, but um, I have a feeling that they're going to want to save these. Hopefully, they're a dual purpose and they have fun with them. My daughter was out of the house when I went to go pick up the cake, so it allowed me the perfect amount of time to get the cake toppers on and surprise them when they came home. I'm really not sure who ended up loving them more, me or them. I'm really excited that I could share with you not one, but two variations of cake toppers. So hopefully you learned something, can take it, and make your own out of it. And if you think that this tutorial has been helpful for you, make sure that you follow along for more tip talks and head on over to YouTube and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm so grateful that I get to work with you guys every day.